Hello and welcome to our last episode in our P4 Radiation for Life topic. Now, today we're looking at nuclear fusion. Uh, I think this may be quite a short lesson, so I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you at the end. Bye-bye. Okay, so here are our objectives for today's lesson. By the end of this video, we should be looking or able to understand how nuclear fusion can be used to generate electricity and what happens when atoms un undergoes fusion. Okay, so what is nuclear fusion? Now, on the screen here, we can see that we've got one proton here and we've got another nuclei here that's got one proton and one neutron. Now, this nuclei here that contains just the one proton is a hydrogen nuclei. Now, over here, where we have the one proton and one neutron, it's an isotope of hydrogen. Same proton number, or atomic number, but here we've got a slightly different mass. Now, this one is known as deuterium. Now, any of you that understand French will know that deu means two, and here we've got an atomic mass, or a nuclear mass, of two. So what happens during nuclear fusion? Now, during nuclear fusion, what happens is that the two nuclei overcome their electrostatic forces and they combine. So now, the hydrogen and the deuterium have disappeared. Now, what we have is a nuclei of helium. Now, you'll notice here that we've got the two protons that allow it to be helium, but we've only got one, one neutron, which means this is an isotope of helium. Now, here is the nuclear equation for this reaction. So here we've got the atomic number of one for both the hydrogen and the deuterium. And here we've got the masses of the hydrogen and the deuterium. Now you'll see that as they combine, you get uh, the two protons here and you get the total mass. So how do we get the energy for this? Now the energy comes from during the fusion process we get the uh, the energy or a, a small amount of mass is lost and that is given out in the form of energy according to Einstein's equation of E equals mc squared. So the mass that's lost is times by the speed of light squared gives you that energy. Now what we've just seen in the in the uh, previous section was how we actually get nuclear fusion. Now one of the big problems is that the amount of energy required to overcome the electrostatic forces. Now as you get two positive charges coming towards each other, so if we have a, another look, so as the proton comes towards it, it's likely to be repelled by the other proton. Now, this means that it's very difficult for, for this to, to fuse together. Now, what needs to happen is we need to be able to overcome that energy. Now, it, take, it requires a hell of a lot of energy to be able to do this, and the only place that it occurs naturally is in stars. Now, stars are fueled by hydrogen, and it's those isotopes, hydrogen and deuterium, that allow the stars to actually fuse to make the helium. Now, some of them can actually go on to do uh, even more fusion, where we can get bigger and bigger elements all the way up to iron. But our star it, uh, is mainly hydrogen and helium. Now, obviously, for a star to do this, we need to have the right conditions. And these conditions are the high temperatures and the high pressures. So you need high temperature, high pressure in order for nuclear fusion to actually happen. At the moment, nuclear fission is the only way of generating nuclear energy. Nuclear fusion is something that we could consider for the future. The only problem is that, like we've just seen, it's only stars that have the naturally high 
temperatures and pressures to actually do this and it's actually going to take about 14 million degrees to actually get the temperatures high enough which is realistically it's not going to be possible on earth now once you get the reaction going so once we get this actually happening the energy that's released from the E equals M C squared the energy that's released is enough to provide that 14 million degrees so once we can get it going it is sustainable but it's getting it going that's the problem now cold fusion is something that's been quite a controversial idea now back in 1989 two scientists by the name of Stanley Pons and Martin Fleischmann came up with the idea that cold fusion could be done at room temperature they did an experiment that involved using heavy water electrolyzing it and then combining that the the hydrogen with neutrons now this has been widely discredited because of one key fact and that key fact is the fact that it cannot be repeated now this is one of the great ideas of science that every scientific idea needs to be repeated it needs to be able to be followed and repeated by somebody else and their experiment wasn't able to do that now that doesn't mean to say that cold fusion is not possible but it is likely that we need to put more technology into getting this this idea proven so what are the advantages of using nuclear fusion over nuclear fission and fossil fuel in terms of gaining energy now we know that with um, fossil fuels we get lots and lots of environmental issues such as the production of carbon dioxide and the greenhouse effect now with nuclear fission this is where we get lots and lots of um, plutonium that is produced and that obviously has um, radioactive implications as it is an alpha alpha emitter and beta emitter and gamma emitter that it can cause lots and lots of uh, problems for disposal now with nuclear fusion if we have a look here we can see that here we've got the hydrogen and deuterium with the helium now the helium has no radioactive implications it also doesn't contribute to the greenhouse effect so it is a much cleaner method of doing it of generating electricity or energy all we need to do is be able to get it to go ahead and then we'll be able to generate lots and lots of energy okay so that is our last episode in the p4 uh, radiation for life um, in this last lesson we've looked at uh, nuclear fusion and how we can get a uh, two isotopes of hydrogen to fuse to form a helium which normally happens in in stars such as the Sun we've also looked at possibilities of using that as a way to generate energy on earth uh, with one experiment being conducted in the in the late 80s but has been disproven because or not not been accepted because of that controversy that it cannot be repeated Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Bye bye.